heat strip. My name is Tony Thomas, and you're watching Hardwired Exotics on YouTube. What's going on? Today, Craig could not make it. It's just me, and I'm trying to sell film. Bear with us. I've decided that I'm going to run heat strips on all these racks. Two issues there is one, it costs a lot of money, and the two, uh, it's a lot of work to pull all these racks out, put heat strips in, hook up your thermostats, and all that. Uh, it's also something that like I said, I haven't done it in a long time, so I'm a little leery of it. Uh, I personally hate heat strips, I hate thermostats, simply because if it's running too hot, you are running a risk of hurting your animals, you're running a risk of getting slugs on your females, but if ambient temperature is gonna create slugs, then I don't really have a choice. So that's what we're gonna do. Next up, here's some of the heat panels. These come from ARS. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is get your rag ready wipe down your edges. Um, the reason why we're going to wipe down these edges right here is because we're going to have uh, st sticky and velcro that are going to hold these heat, heat strips to the rack. Usually you install these when you're putting the rack together but obviously the rack's already together so I want to give you a quick little tip. Also I just went ahead and wiped down the back of the rack because it was a little dusty. If you have animals you're going to have dirt and dust and cobwebs behind these racks. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it's, it, it's just what happens. Alright, so this is how the heat strips are packaged. So it's really cool over the years they've started incorporating this uh, insulation on top of the uh, heat strip. So the heat strip's actually under this insulation. Here's what I've basically been doing. It's a lot easier with two people. That's why uh, Jeremy made this a lot easier for me. But what I've basically been doing is pushing the tubs forward. Just sliding that in. Hope I'm in focus on the camera. But basically just take this 3M, which I'm a big fan of 3M stuff. And that sticks to that reel right there. Same thing on the other side. Pull this off and stick it down. And then pull your drawers back. Hopefully your snakes don't get out. down the rack. Alright, so once you get all your uh, heat panels installed, they all have cords. So, because I am running a thermostat, which I'll show you here in a minute, that runs two different zones, I'm going to separate my cords by zone. So I'm gonna have one zone up top, 
two zones at the bottom. Reason for that is heat goes up. I mean, in your room, it's always going to be hotter in the ceiling than the floor. So this rack here is going to be at a different temperature than this one down here. So by zoning it out into two different areas, uh, I can run separate temperatures on top of the rack and separate temperature on the bottom if I need to. So it just gives me that option if I need to, um, just the way I prefer to do it. So you need some power strips. And the reason why you need the power strips is because however many you have, in this particular instance, I'm gonna have six because I have one level up here, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna plug D6 into this, and that will be one zone, zone one, and this will plug into my thermostat, which I'll show you here in a minute. I prefer to keep all my stuff in order. That way, if the heat panel's not working, I know which panel it's plugged into where without having to guess. Also, zip ties will be your friend in this. So you have your first zone right here. What I like about the hybrid rack is this little plastic piece right here actually cools out a little bit. And you can get a zip tie right through that. And that allows me to zip tie this right to the back of the rack so that just keeps a little bit more organized. Zone one, zone two. All right, so let's get to your thermostat. Um, I prefer VE. A lot of people pre prefer herpstat, but I definitely recommend one of those two. Um, I don't know enough about anything else to recommend anything else. So this particular one is the VE 300 X2. The X2 means two different zones as I just explained a while ago. So uh, what you're gonna have as far as stuff to plug into on the back, um, zone one, I'm going to plug into zone 1, zone 2, I'm going to plug into zone 2. Next thing you have to worry about is your probes. So this is actually what tells the temperature and sends the temperature to that unit to make that unit cut on and off. I'm not going to get into how a thermostat works. There's plenty of videos out there you can figure that out on your own. Get you some good tape. So what I like to do pretty wide so you can tear it down the middle. Probes right there. Just take a piece of tape and go there. I like to get it halfway between my zones so it's gonna be about right here. Tape that down onto your metal panel where your heat strip is. Take the other piece, run across the wire. You do not want that going anywhere. If that comes off, you're gonna have problems. This is upper part of zone one. So you just plug this into number one on the back. Zip ties are your friend again. You wanna make sure that this zip tie doesn't have much pressure on it. You don't want much play in this line. The more this wire wiggles, the more that tape lets loose, the more issues you have. I'm gonna repeat for zone two down here at the bottom. Same thing. The only cord left is gonna be the power cord to the thermostat and uh, it's got a big wide piece and that's going to plug in to there so then this plugs into the wall so this unit runs this whole setup um, I do plan on adding a backup thermostat but honestly I just don't have the funds at the moment to buy a crap more other stuff so I'm gonna run these until I can uh, save up a little bit more money and run a backup for these. But that's a whole different ball game. I'm not gonna show you how to run this. There's a thousand videos on how to program um, your thermostat, but that's it. Uh, on installing this stuff, let's get this rack back in its spot. All right, so the rack's back in place. Fixing to grab this one, snatch it out. It's just the same thing. But um, you know, dealing with animals, you really never know what to expect and doing this full time it uh it has a lot of rewards to it but it also has a lot of pain and spending this kind of money was right here at christmas was uh was a big pain for me um i did i did not enjoy taking that money and, and spending it on heat strips i don't know what else to say about it other than it just ain't it's not it's not fun but as a as a business owner and 
as a person that depends on these animals uh, to feed my kids, I have to do whatever I have to do to make sure my animals are taken care of. And that means spending money even when you don't want to or even when you don't have the money to do it. You have to make a way. Um, I didn't go out and just give snakes away for a hundred bucks just to try to recoup this. Um, it's just part of doing business. So if you're thinking about doing this full time, make sure you keep plenty of money on hand um, in case you have to do something like this. This was not expected, but uh, it's just part of life. On a good note, uh, the heat panels will allow me to use the bottom rows. I've never used the bottom rows. Um, I've just kind of used it for extra tubs. So now that they have heat panels on the bottom row, I can actually uh, house more animals because I can use that. So that's a uh, seven, 11, 15, 18. That's 22 more animals I can house in here just from using that bottom row. So uh, it's an expensive cost to do that for me, but uh, hey, you gotta look at uh, the bright side every every chance you can. So I think that's it. Hope y'all enjoyed this and stay tuned. See you next time. Thanks for watching Hardwired Exotics and make sure you subscribe. Bye.